Hi, my name is Matt Klein, and I am an automation specialist with Electromatic Products, working out of our Grand Rapids, Michigan office. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to get the Somatic IoT 2040 set up using the example image on the Siemens Industry Online Support website. In order to do this, you're going to need a few things. Obviously, an IoT 2040. You're going to need a PC that's capable of reading and writing to a micro SD card. I happen to have an SD adapter for that, and an Ethernet cable to plug from your PC into the IoT 2040. The first step in getting your IoT 2040 up and running is to download the example image found on the Siemens Industry Online Support website. To navigate to that website, I'm going to type in support.industry.siemens.com, and what this does is it brings up the website, and there's a search box here and I'm going to do a search for IoT 2000 image. And the first result that comes up after doing that search should be a link to download the example SD card image for your IoT 2000. Now, whenever I navigate to a download option in the Siemens Industry Support website, um, if you see a little key here under the file link, um, it is going to require you to actually log in to the site and if you have something called export authorization, it will allow you to download that file. Now it's an easy process, usually takes about a day to get approved, but once you're approved, you can download files without restriction. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. Um, I'm successfully logged in. And now I can go ahead and download this file and we'll just throw it on in a folder on the desktop of our computer here, under IoT 2040. And then once that file um, is completed downloading, just go ahead and extract that archive into a folder that you know where it is so it's easy to find later. Now my download has completed and I went ahead and retrieved the archive which I stored here into this IoT 2000 image folder. And so now we can use this file to go ahead and create an image on our SD card. Now I happen to have a 32 gig micro SD card that we're going to use to load the image file for the operating system of this unit. Um, the IoT 2040 will accept anything from an 8 gigabyte up to a 32 gigabyte card. So I'm going to be using a program called Win32 Disk Imager to go ahead and create that image. Um, the first thing you need to do, if you, if you purchase one of these memory cards right out of the box, you should be able to proceed right to this step. If you have a memory card that has already been formatted, what you're going to have to do is delete the volume that's on there. And I'm going to go ahead and do that by right-clicking and going to the Disk Management in Windows. And under my Disk Management, I'm going to go ahead and find the SD card disk, which is this Disk 3, and I'm going to go ahead and delete any of the volumes that are on there. So there's two different volumes currently located on this SD card. We're going to go ahead and delete one of them. We're going to delete the other. And from there, you're essentially starting from scratch. So at this point, what we can do is go ahead and launch our Win32 disk imager. And I'm going to go ahead and navigate to that folder that I um, retrieved that archive from. And it's under my desktop, IoT 2040, and IoT 2000 image. And we're going to look at all files. We're going to choose our example file, which we downloaded. And then make sure the correct drive letter was chosen and go ahead and click on write. And it's just another warning message saying that you are gonna overwrite everything that's there. And usually this takes um, about a minute and a half. And what you're gonna do when this is complete is you're gonna go ahead and plug your SD card into your unit and you're gonna power your unit up. And usually it takes a couple of minutes for it to initialize and get completely booted. And from there, we're going to make an Ethernet connection to this device. My newly formatted SD card has been placed into my IoT 2040. I powered it up and given it a couple minutes to boot up and get initialized. Now what we're going to do now is create a connection to the operating system of the device. I'm using a program called PuTTY in order to do this. And there are others. Um, PuTTY tends to be a pretty nice one to allow you to get into Linux. Um, the one thing to note is that the IoT 2040 on the X1 Ethernet port defaults to an IP address of 192.168.200.1. So 
Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your computer is on the same IP subnet so that you can make a connection into the device. The X2 port on the IoT2040 is defaulted for DHCP. So we're gonna connect using the X1 port. Uh, the default address for SSH connections is gonna be port 22. If you wanted to connect via the USB port or maybe via serially, you could do that with the software as well, but we're gonna connect via ethernet. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in the IP address here of 192.168.200.1. Now you can actually save this configuration so that you don't have to type it in every time. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on open. The first thing that happens when you connect with PuTTY into this environment is that it's gonna give you this security warning. So we're gonna say yes to get past it. And we're gonna log in using the login route. Now right out of the box, when we install our example image, we do not have a password associated with this. You may want to do that um, just for security reasons. And in order to change the password on this device or to enable it, you just type in the command P-A-S-S-W-D and you hit enter. And at this point you can enter your new password. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Enter it once. Obviously it's for authentication, it's gonna require you to enter it again. And now my password has been changed. So what we're gonna do is just play around a little bit inside Linux, um, not a whole lot. We're just gonna go ahead and go to the root directory of this by typing in CD followed by a space followed by slash. And we're gonna type in LS to just show us all the files and folders that are in the root directory of this thing. And our next step is going to be to actually run a, a small utility called IoT 2000 Setup to go through some various options for the unit. In order to get into our setup utility, all we need to do is type in IoT 2000 Setup. We hit enter and it goes ahead and launches this setup utility. And you can see a variety of different things within this utility. We're gonna step through a couple of them. Under our operating system settings, this allows us to change the host name or the password, and then you can use the tab key to kind of move in between some of the different options here. Under networking options, you can configure the interface. So as you can see, as I mentioned before, the default address of 192.168.200.1 and then DHCP for the second address. Now I'm gonna show you inside Linux how to go ahead and change the other IP address if you wanted to. And from there, you can also change the subnet because this utility does not allow you to change that subnet. So we'll show you that a little bit later. Um, going into some other options under software. Um, mentioned earlier that there is a software package called Node-RED and you can go ahead and enable Node-RED by going into the auto start options. So if I hit enter here, and then tab down to done. Whenever I restart my IoT 2040 now, it will actually allow me to start Node Red by default. Uh, you can also delete packages that you have on here by going into the Manage Packages utility. And I can check any of these boxes and go ahead and delete any of these softwares if I want to. I'm not going to do that here. And then finally, um, there's this peripheral section and the peripherals allows you to configure options, for instance, for your COM ports. Your COM ports can be configured as RS-232, RS-422, or RS-45. And then you can configure those using this utility here. You can see how to do that. Um, my IO configuration is shown as well. This is just essentially on our Arduino shield interface. Um, it's showing how the GPIO is set up here. So we're gonna go back here and back here. And we're gonna go ahead and quit this utility. What we wanna do now is show you how to change possibly the subnet or maybe the IP address on your other interfaces using your Linux commands. So there's a directory in, in this unit called um, etc slash network. That's where our interfaces file is and that's where we use to, to set up our actual IP addresses. Now we can list our IP addresses in our um, utilities by typing in if config. And if I can scroll up, and here I can see that my 192.168.200.1 is for my first port and my X2 port 
is showing up as DHCP. So let me navigate to that directory and we're going to type in cd etc slash network. And then if I list my files here, I can see I have my interfaces file. And in order to edit that interfaces file, you type in the command nano space interfaces. And again, we see here how our ethernet port X1, which is our ETH0 port, is set up for 192.168.200.1, and I can edit the subnet mask here. And I can also um, edit how I want my ethernet one port to behave. So I can arrow down to my ethernet one port, and instead of DHCP, we can set this up for static. And then under static, I can just type in my address, and for our purposes, I'm gonna choose 192.168.0.1. And my net mask, I'm gonna set up as 255.255.255.0. In order to save this configuration, you're gonna hit Control X, and then you're gonna say Y to save changes. And then it's going to ask me to either to rename that file. We're not going to rename it. We want to overwrite it because the operating system uses that file to set my IP addresses. And at this point, what you're going to have to do to enable that change is you're going to have to cycle power on the unit. So go ahead and cycle power on the unit, and then we'll connect back in, and we'll show you that that change has been made. We've cycled power and allowed the unit to boot back up. So now let's make a connection back into the unit and we'll verify that the IP address change worked. Do our login, enter our password. And let's run our IoT 2000 setup program. Go directly to our networking, figure interfaces, and there you can see that my ethernet addresses have changed. Let's go ahead and log out of this and we can go ahead also and shut down Putty. Now at this point you're open to basically do whatever you like with the unit. Uh, if you want to do some programming using Node-RED or utilize the Eclipse IDE interface, you can go ahead and do that. Um, you also realize that there are a lot of different resources available for you on the internet to help you with this. In particular, the Siemens Industry Online Support website. I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the resources available on the Siemens Industry Online Support website to allow to help you with the programming and troubleshooting and anything you need to know with the IoT 2000 unit. So I've got a saved link here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And once you have the website open, you can go ahead and click on this forum section. And the forum is really where a lot of the documentation, it's where a lot of the resources and a lot of the links reside for this particular unit. Under product conferences, you can see there's an entire section dedicated to the IoT 2000. And I would recommend right away, um, if you click on this first link, this news, tutorials, applications, FAQs, there's a really nice entry called this IoT 2000 starter guide and useful information. And this gives you information about actually purchasing and setting up a lot of the things we just did. Uh, it also gives you some application examples on PLC communications using some different interfaces, um, using the IDE, Eclipse IDE, and also some different libraries that you can use. So a lot of very extensive information here. There are other users that post questions, um, try to do some troubleshooting, and there's a lot of different information that's passed back and forth. Now that you have the example image installed, you can go ahead and start customizing. And if you have any additional questions or want to see more in videos like this, you can go to our website, give us a call, or visit our social media pages. Thank you.